All righty, I'm here today with Dr. Ann Koch. And Annie, we're doing a segment called Your Favorite Article. My favorite research article in endodontics is an article many years ago written by Mel Goldman, Who's Reading the Radiograph? That's, that's great. I have the article, just pulled it up here, Endodontic Success is Reading the Radiograph by Mel Gold, Goldman, 1972. Mm hmm Long time ago. Old school. So can you give us a little synopsis? They did 253 cases. Right, and they had and six board-certified endodontists evaluate the cases. And what's so amazing... So they're radiographs, right? Radiographs, so they had radiographs yes. of these cases. Absolutely. And, and it was okay. such incredible wide variation in how the radiographs were viewed. There are some endodontists thought it was absolutely a fabulous case. Other endodontists thought the case was horrible, bordering on negligence. So there was tremendous disagreement on the same radiographs. I think that's really, really insightful. And also in terms of the healing, whether a case had healed or not, there was a lesion, there wasn't a lesion. Right. These, these are board-certified endodontists, and less than 50% of the time, they could agree whether or not there was an area present. Yeah. Think about that. I mean, that's usually something that's kind of a bit of a no-brainer, you think. But among these practitioners, among these specialists, the agreement was less than 50%. What's even more interesting, Annie, is that they did a subsequent follow-up like a few months later on. Right. These, and the same endodontists came back and looked at the same right. cases and they had tremendous disagreement with themselves <laughs> on whether I, a case had healed or not. I, I think there's an enormous amount we have to take away from this thing because I think this is the most realistic research ever done. And one of the things here with this, even in a space, even in a specialty as evidential as endodontics, there's tremendous subjectivity that takes place. Like, oh my gosh, that's a terrible case. Oh my gosh, this case looks beautiful. And so depending on whether it's Tuesday or Thursday, these guys were having different impressions. I think that's a really salient point. And it, it is so true. I mean, that's real world, right? I mean, that's it's totally essentially real clinical. World. It's happened to me so often. Right. I'm like, I see a patient scheduled for surgery. I look at the x-ray, I walk into the office, and I'm like, who scheduled this for surgery? This should be a retreatment <laughs> or a revision. Absolutely. I look at the notes, like, oh, it was me. Right. Okay? <laughs> so. and, and I think what's to be gleaned from this is that before people get too histrionic looking at cases, you know, walk away, come back, look at the case, evaluate things. And, you know, it's just like, for instance, we're here in Boston. And if you're an endodontist in Boston, uh, the referring dentists like to see a puff, right? And if you don't get puffs with your cases, you kind of get a lot less referrals. But there are certain states out in the Midwest, if you get a puff, you're never getting another case sent to you. Right. So right. I think this is stuff, especially young practitioners, whether you're a GP or an endodontist, have to keep in mind. And I would strongly suggest everybody read this article. It's a very short article. It's just a few pages. And what was the journal that it was in back in 1972? It's in the Journal of Oral Surgery, Oral Medicine, Oral Pathology. Right, triple O. So, yeah, the Triple O Journal, uh, Volume 33, Issue 3, March of 1972. So um, that's a, uh, you know, that's a great article because it's very true to the clinical aspects of uh, endo. But it's not just endo, to be honest, Annie. Right. I think it's, it's the same across medicine. Let's not corner endo into one specific thing because I think it's medicine as a endo. whole, totally. that's the whole art and science of the practice because so much is based on clinical experience. And, and I think it's really important for me, especially with young uh, residents, young graduates, young you know, graduates from dental school as well, is that you start to be able to differentiate science from marketing. Right. And that's even also a very blurred line. When is it marketing? When is it science? And so, you know, I say that because this article talks about the subjectivity, but also in terms of talking about success. You know, right now, I think if you speak to academic endodontists, the, the number that we talk about is kind of in that about 97, 97 and a half percent of teeth being retained in a successful endodontic practice. But if you go back to the late 1970s, like 1978, what was the success rate then? Well, I mean, if you go back to Ingalls' study, which is even earlier than that, we had like about a 94% right, success rate. Right, 94.5%. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff, which has definitely moved mm. the needle forward, it's increasing the success rate, maybe 2 2.5%. So let's look at things here with a little bit more of a cautionary eye. You know, endodontics didn't have a poor success rate in the 70s. It had a very high success rate. Right. right. Uh, that's true, and I always talk about that as well, is that all the bells and whistles and the right. tools that... Uh, we offer improving your efficiency. The success still comes from those same fundamentals 1, that are the same when Dr. Emil Rhines did his first root canal 19, uh, showed his root canal right. 1917, and that what we do today. So those fundamentals haven't changed, and you can achieve those with anything as long as you're, you know, you're, you understand the fundamentals and the concepts. As I like to say, though, when I when I lecture, you cannot worship at the altar of technology. Rather, 
utilize the latest technology and material science and go forward in concert with long established evidence based, based principles. principles. I think so that's. I love uh, your quote there. Yeah, that's, that's, I, really... that's the route to the highest success. But overall, I've seen lots of gazillion research papers through the years. My absolute favorite, because it's so clean and so truthful, is Mel Goldman's Who's Reading the Radio. That's terrific. Quickly, also, just a, uh, in addition to that, is that you know, we know periapical radiographs based on the Seltzer and Bender studies, you require right. a certain amount right. of decalcification yeah. before you can have that transposed right. exactly. image show you that level right. of bone loss. Now, with the CBCT technology since the past 10 years or so, we have a little bit better resolution. So, especially having that, you know. Uh, either the axial section or the sagittal section and the anterior or the coronal section and the posterior, you're able to see angles that you weren't able to see in the, right, in right. the regular right. um, radiograph. So you have additional information. But still, you know, if you look at the whole spectrum of disease, it starts from periapical radiograph all the way to like, you know, CBCT and then like uh, histological sections. Right, right. And at the end of the day, like molecular right. diagnosis of if there right. is disease or not. Uh, it is a spectrum. Ultimately, that's why practice should be patient-based, where your right. patient's response is more important than you are focusing on a radiograph or just a set of processes in a look. It's not radiodontics. It's not an academic exercise. Yeah. It's treating patients. Absolutely, and that's what the dean of the school is just uh, kind of retiring finally after a long, a great service used to say is treat the patient, not, not the radiograph. 1,000% in agreement. Yeah. Absolutely. Terrific, Annie. And great, and I'm very impressed. That's a wonderful uh, study uh, and article that you've chosen and your favorite <laughs> it's article. It's my favorite. And very another thing, world. too, I want to wish everyone out there, all the real world end of you, is happy holidays and best wishes for a happy new year. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's Terrific. to 2020.